All right, so in this video, we're going to start looking at some of the specifics when it comes to the Army units. Now, let's take and click right here on our Army, and you see, again, it pulls them up down here so we can see what all units are involved. And of course, we've gone over the basics already, the infantry, cavalry, artillery, those are your three basic military units. And when you're looking at these units, you can see they have a little bit of information on them. Obviously, a picture of whether it's infantry, artillery, or cavalry. Uh, down here in the bottom right, there is going to be a number, and that number is going to be between 0 and 6. And this is the unit's experience. So the better they are, the higher the number is going to be. So your most elite units are going to be a 6, and your new, fresh, out of basic units, they're going to be a 0. We'll uh, touch a little later on on how you're going to increase the experience with your units. Now up here in the upper right is the state that each one of the units is from. So you see they're not all from the same state. You got Massachusetts, New York, New Hampshire, Vermont, all the different states. And this is one of the things you kind of got to keep in the back of your head on where they're from. Because again, you don't want to lose a whole lot of units from the same state because it can affect your recruiting pool. Now, something else you have to consider when it comes to your units is what type of weapon they're using. Now, if we look at these two infantry units, you'll notice that this one has a small little white S in its upper left corner. This signifies that this unit is a smooth bore, so their rifle is not rifled. They aren't as accurate in combat as units that don't have that little small S. Now, at the start of the war, it's much more common to have units generated that have the smoothbore rifles than later on in the war. So, actually, if we click on some Confederate units here, see, let's find one that has more units, and you'll see all of these are smoothbore, and that's because the Confederates have a much larger chance to have smoothbore infantry created when they are recruiting. For example, when they recruit in 1862, it's still 60% to have smoothbore, 63 it's 40%, 64 it's 20%. It does go down over time, but they do have a fairly significant chance of producing still the smoothbore infantry. And these infantry do incur a penalty of a minus two to their attack. However, after a battle, they do have a 20% chance if they survive to be promoted up to a rifled unit. Also, it's not just the infantry that can have either a smooth or a rifled weapon. That can be artillery as well. So let's select this group of units and you can see we have some artillery located down here, but this one has a R located in its upper left corner. That signifies that this artillery is rifled while the rest of these artillery pieces are going to be smoothbore weapons. Now, generally speaking, the smoothbore were a little better at close range and the rifle were much better at longer range. They were more accurate. And when you produce artillery units, it's going to depend on what year it is on what type of artillery unit you're going to get. It's going to be random when it comes to the actual generation of the units. So I'll put a picture on screen for you now and you can see that the Union has a much better chance of producing rifled artillery than the Confederacy does. 61, it's 20% versus 0% for the Confederacy, and then the Union, it just keeps getting better each year as each year goes by with 40%, 60%, 70%, and then 80% towards the end of the war of producing rifled artillery. And you see with the Confederacy, they never get higher than 20% chance. So that is something you need to keep in mind if you're playing the Confederates, is that they are not very likely to have the upgraded rifled artillery. Now there is one other type that I'm gonna address in this video, and that has to do with repeating rifles. And this is something that you can get from one of your event cards. So let's click here, I think I do have one. Yep, right here, repeating rifles. Adding a repeating rifle to one of your infantry or cavalry units, and this gains them a plus two to their attack and their defense, and it gives a chance to cause disorder to the enemy units. We'll get into disorder when we start talking about the battle specifically, but let's click on this card and play it. 
and we have to select a unit to receive this upgrade. So let's select this infantry unit or cavalry unit rather from New York and select the unit. And now you see that they have a RR in their upper left hand corner, designating them as carrying repeating rifles. So they do have that bonus to their attack and defense and can cause that disruption to the enemy units.